Hello and welcome to Peak Experiences. The purpose of this video is to orient you with the necessary policies and procedures for our facility. After completing this video, all climbers must complete an assumption of risk form and check in at our front desk. All visitors 10 years of age and younger must be supervised by a parent or legal guardian the entire time they're in our facility, unless part of a Peak Experiences program. Before we begin, it's important to know and understand that climbing is dangerous. There are many inherent and unforeseen risks involved in climbing that can result in injury or even death. Make sure to review our posted warning signs located at the front of the facility, along with our gym rules. Before you start climbing, remove anything that could get in the way or fall while climbing. This includes any large jewelry, watches, phones, or anything in your pockets. Please do not leave your belongings on the climbing floor, especially on the pads as they could become a hazard to anyone walking in the bouldering area or for climbers that may fall on those items. Cubbies are provided around the gym for storage of your personal belongings. Socks and bare feet are not allowed in the climbing wall at any time. While climbing, please wear appropriate climbing shoes or closed-toed street shoes. It is also highly recommended you wear shoes at all times while in a peak facility due to the potential for foot injuries from uneven surfaces or foreign objects. Food and glass bottles are not allowed in the climbing areas, fitness areas, or the fitness studio. Please place all trash and recyclables in appropriate bins located throughout the facility. You may not engage in any activities as defined by the Peak Experience's Assumption of Risk form after consuming alcohol. When using equipment in the fitness area, always follow the manufacturer's instructions and seek instruction for new or unfamiliar equipment. Please wipe down all equipment after use. You must be 16 or older to enter the fitness area or be supervised by an adult at all times. In case of an emergency, please locate the nearest exit marked with an exit sign. In case of a power outage, please come down off of the walls until the power is restored or you're told by a staff member to resume climbing. Now let's talk about some of our bouldering areas. All falls while bouldering are ground falls, as there is no rope system to catch you. Falling may result in injury, and injuries may be severe. Harnesses should be removed prior to bouldering. Understand that holds can spin or break at any time. If you encounter a spinning or broken hold, avoid climbing on it and alert a staff member immediately. Do not try to fix it yourself. Bouldering is allowed up to the top edge of the wall only. Your head should never go above the top of the wall, and at no time should you ever climb on top of the boulder. Bouldering is not allowed over top of the rocks at our Midlothian facility. The boulder problems are easily identified by the color of the tag at the start of the route, with green being the easiest and black being the hardest. Each color is also loosely associated with the V scale, covering a range from V0 to V10, with green beginning at V0 and black pushing V8 and above. Colors can also overlap, so we split them into categories including beginner, intermediate, and advanced. If you ever have a question about a problem's difficulty, please consult the route difficulty signage located around the bouldering area, and don't hesitate to ask a staff member. The start holds are marked by the appropriately colored tags, with the problem ending on the final hold. Once again, you can finish on the top edge of the bouldering wall, but you may not top out or climb over the top of the boulder wall at any time. To avoid confusion, plan your route ahead of time. It is important to practice spatial awareness while in the gym. To put this into practice, look up and make sure you're not underneath any climbers already on the wall. Look left and right to make sure that your problem does not cross another climber's problem. Look down to be sure the padded floor is clear of objects and people. Anticipate the direction you will drop in the event of a fall and make sure that area is clear as well. It is recommended that you down climb after successful completion of your problem whenever possible. In order to ensure all landing zones are clear, avoid sitting or lounging on the padded area and keep all objects off the padding. We ask that you step away from the wall after climbing to allow others to climb in that area as well. Always be aware of your surroundings while bouldering. Now let's go over the purpose and limitations of the padded flooring. Peak Experiences has dedicated padded flooring throughout the entire bouldering area. The padded flooring functions to absorb the impact of a falling climber and is for mitigation reasons only. The bouldering floor is for climbing use only. No flips, somersaults, tricks, etc. of any kind are allowed on this flooring. Although the flooring is padded, injury from impact can still occur, so there is no guarantee of safety while bouldering. As mentioned before, all falls are considered ground falls since there is no rope system in place to catch you. The tenser you are, the more vulnerable you become to injury. In the event of a fall, prepare your body by relaxing. First, widen your feet and bend your knees. You will want to resist the urge to stick your landing and lock your knees as this will increase the risk of injury. Second, tuck your head and limbs close to your body. You want to avoid extending your arms to reach for the floor. Finally, roll onto your back or onto your side. This will help to disperse the energy of the fall into the pads. If you are still unsure of how to properly fall, please seek instruction from a staff member. Spotting is not provided or required. 
The purpose of spotting is to guide a fallen climber to a landing zone while protecting their head and neck. A spotter can also guard the area from obstructions and other climbers. There are hazards to spotters as well, including being kicked in the head, hand and finger injuries, and a risk of being fallen on by the climber. Proper spotting technique involves positioning yourself behind the climber, but not directly underneath. Maintain an athletic stance with bent knees and elbows. And keep your thumbs in towards your palms, never extend it. If a climber falls, do not try to catch them. When spotting, always spot somebody of equal or smaller height and weight. Never try to spot someone significantly larger than you. Remember, there is no guarantee of safety for the climber or the spotter. When you are done with a problem, it is best to climb down using designated down climb holds or larger holds found in the area, rather than jumping. This can decrease the risk of injury, but as a reminder, climbing is dangerous and there is no guarantee of safety. If you decide to drop, please use proper falling technique. Remember, climbing is dangerous. It involves inherent and other unforeseen risks that can result in injury or death. It is your responsibility to always use equipment appropriately or to seek qualified instruction. Always make informed choices and be aware of your surroundings at all times. If you have any questions about the risks, your responsibilities, or anything else in a Peak Experiences facility, please see a staff member. We hope you have a great time climbing with us today. Stay positive, humble, and courteous to others. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You have now completed the Peak Experiences Boulder in an Orientation video.